Uh, thank you for having me. This is a, a wonderful honour. It's a great opportunity as well to come to Vale for the very first time and uh, ski with my family. My kids are up on the slopes now. And I guess the reason that I got into this partly was because of my children's health. And five years from eating low carb or the paleo way or whatever you like to call it, I just like to call it food as medicine, is um, my, my children are thriving, I'm thriving, a whole host of people that are adopting this, as you know, are thriving. So when I was asked to come and have a chat here um, and given 20 minutes, I thought, hmm, what can I do in 20 minutes? Because usually when I do a talk, I go for about six hours. <laughs> and I usually teach people how to cook because I'm a chef. That is my craft, that is my tool, that is what I'm qualified to talk about. And a lot of people say, how can you give nutritional advice? You're just a chef. I go, well, well isn't that my job? <laughs> to create food that's gonna go into your bodies? And I have a choice, I can choose to cook food that potentially may cause you harm, or I can choose to cook food that we know is gonna benefit you, and I choose the latter. So, when I have my 20 minutes, I thought, what can I talk about here? And I thought, there's gonna be scientists, there's gonna be doctors, there's gonna be researchers, there's gonna be everybody here at Low Carb telling you the science, telling you how all of this works. I thought, well, my job is to give you beautiful recipes of how to apply this into your day-to-day -day life. Because that's what everyone says. Well, how the fuck do we do this? <laughs> I don't know how to cook. And that's one of the reasons I became a chef as well, is because I had no idea how to cook when I left high school. I left school, moved out on my own, I was 17, and I chose to become a cook because it was a life skill that so many of us have forgotten or not learnt. And I believe it needs to be taught from a very, very young age for every child. And that's one of my goals is over the next decade, hopefully to teach every child in Australia, or at least, and New Zealand, 10 recipes. 10 recipes that they can cook blindfolded, that are nutrient dense, that are budget friendly, that are quick, that are achievable, and will bring great health. Because at the moment, kids leave school, they got no idea. So many parents or grandparents still don't know how to cook. So, that's what my little talk is gonna be about today. Everyone cool with that? Cool. So, we've heard about the low carb movement, that's why we're all here. So this is how I put together my paleo plate. And I call it paleo because this is how this was introduced to me. I read a book called Primal Body, Primal Bind about five years ago by Nora Gagaudis, and it just made sense. She advocates a moderate amount of meat. She doesn't uh, promote excess meat, which I think is smart especially with sustainability issues. I, as a chef, love to use offal, nose to tail, and that's one of my goals over the next decade or two is try to make offal cool. It's probably a very, very hard task. I made hamburger patties for my kids two nights ago and I put in some pate, only 10%. And my, first, my youngest daughter, nine, she was eating it. She had one burger patty, she goes, oh, this is so good. And then my second daughter, my oldest daughter, had it. She had two bites and she goes, do you put liver in this, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> and my youngest daughter was like, no. <laughs> I just smiled. She didn't want to eat the rest. Because <laughs> it is, it's that, it's that uh, the belief system or thought process that makes certain foods <laughs> squeamish or, or not pleasurable, even though she was bloody loving it. So, the paleo plate, putting it into practice. Palm-sized pe piece of meat or seafood, as we know, well-sourced. From an animal that's had a natural diet, which is getting harder and harder to find. An abundance of colourful vegetables. Well, I do a 10-week program, it's called the Paleo Way, for people to adopt so that they get the science, they get the information, they get the recipes, they get motivation of how to put this into practice. A lot of people that do this are overweight, so we always say, probably for 10 weeks, over the above the ground vegetables, low sugar content. You know, if you're an athlete or you're younger, have some sweet potato. It's not going to kill you, okay? But if you do want to lose weight, we always say, for 10 weeks, mainly favour the green vegetables, the white vegetables, 
the uh, cauliflowers, the broccolis, the kales, the, the beets, the chards. Beautiful. That's what we ate last night. Enough dietary fat to satiate in the form of good quality fats, either from animal fats or animals, land or sea. We've also got avocados in there, which are fruits. Olives are fruits. Beautiful. Nut seeds, if you can tolerate them. Eggs, coconuts. Awesome. Really, really simple. As we're talking about, a lot of people here have talked about the gut microbiome. So as in some fermented vegetables daily, we eat them at every meal, except in Vail. I couldn't find any. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, but I did bring a, a, to this country, I bought a probiotic drink. So every day I make the kids a beautiful probiotic drink. Really simple. Add in some probiotic beverages, if you like, the kombuchas, the kefirs. If you want to have dairy, then have the dairy kefir. If, you, if you're avoiding dairy, then have um, water kefir. Bone broth. I'm sure it's been spoken about here before. We have it every day. At home, I've got at my lodge here. I've had a pot on for the last four days. I had uh, Dr. Chatterjee over last night. We had wild salmon sashimi for entree with avocado and cucumber and salmon roe, beautiful source of omega-3s. Then we followed it with roast chicken, beautiful organic vegetables. Thank you, Door-to-Door -door Organics in Colorado for delivering food to my door so I don't have to eat the shit that's on the mountain. Um, so we've been cooking pretty much day in and day out for my family. It comes down to a choice. Uh, but we do have bone broth every day. Good for the guts. It has all those beautiful things and if we look at traditional societies, nothing went to waste. All cultures around the world always boiled or simmered their bones. Nothing went to waste. And it's delicious. As a chef, it was the first thing I learned in culinary school. How to make a stock or broth. French culinary training starts with flavour. They had no idea about nutritional training. Chefs have as much nutritional training as doctors. <laughs> That's going to change the future. I still can't believe there's more, not more of me around, not more chefs globally that have cottoned on to this, that this is the future. And herbs and spices to round it all off. I do believe we live in the best time in the world and also the worst of times. But as a chef, we live in the best time because we can make the most delicious food ever because we've got access to all these sp spices, herbs, as you say, in this country. Um, we have it all. I've shot over the last year and a half over 1,200 recipes. All low carb, dairy free, grain free, legume free. Basically the low carb movement. And I haven't even scratched the surface yet. So what's out? Well, that's up to you. But a good place to start is the foods that cause us the most issues at the moment that then cause inflammation in the body. Now, you don't have to do all of this, but I always suggest to people, start with this for 10 weeks, three months, and then start incorporating them back in and see how your body feels. You're not gonna die after two or three months if you're not eating grains, legumes, dairy, toxic oils, as we've spoken about, and refined sugars. Now, some people might say, you know what, I love dairy. I go, cool, just take it out for three months, see how you feel, then pop it back in. If your body is cool with it, it'll tell you. But if you're holding on to a belief system that it's not bad, just ask your body to try it. It won't lie. And I'm not here to get anyone off grains or anyone off dairy or anything off legumes. Just try it. Your body doesn't lie. If you have autoimmune issues, then you might need to take it one step further. You might need to look at nightshades they can cause massive issues for a lot of people. Eggs, there's so many people that are intolerant or allergic to eggs these days, but they still believe they're a good food to eat. Nuts and seeds. Now this isn't a life sentence where you can never eat this, but it's about getting the gut and the body working again, so potentially down the track we can incorporate these foods again. There's a lot of research, Dr. Terry Walls, Dr. Sarah, Sarah Ballantyne, Wonderful research on this type of stuff for autoimmune, and we know autoimmune is blowing up. So what's left? <laughs> what we talked about before, good quality meat, lots of vegetables, good quality fats. Now, of course, everyone is different. However, the majority of people that I've seen that have adopted this way of life 
improve their health, some drastically. I've had 30,000 people so far come through and do my program and every day I share their success stories on social media because it's a wonderful form of communication these days. Blood tests before and after, I mean photos before and after. People can't believe that physical transformations, mental trans transformations, spiritual transformations, or from giving up a few so-called healthy food groups. They're not wasting away, they're thriving. The amount of people that I've had in the 60s and 70s say to me, I'm ready to live my life again. I'm ready to, and for me, what I love about this and what inspires me so much, it's not so much the health aspect, even though that's very important. It's what these people want to do with their life now. They've got the energy now to live their dreams. And their dreams might be volunteering at the hospital. It might be art. They might start painting again. It might make music. You know, and that's, this is what inspires me. Is because once people have the energy to do the things that they love, that's when magic happens. And that cannot never be underestimated. So, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'd love it if we could remove those words altogether, <laughs> those titles, those labels. I'd love to remove the word paleo or low carb. I, just, I believe in 10, 15, 20 years, the paleo, low carb, whatever you want to call it, banting, it shouldn't even need a name. The standard American diet or standard Australian diet, or as I said to Dr. Chatterjee last night, you've got the great acronym, the suck diet for the United Kingdom. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I like that. I said, you can have that one. And, um, but I believe that will be seen as the fad. That will be seen as the extreme. Much like we look back at how people smoked a few decades ago as being normal. I honestly think it will. But as far as labels or definitions, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just fucking food. <laughs> Excuse my language, I'm a chef. You're all aware of Ramsay. <laughs> We are all a little bit like that. <laughs> but it is, it's just food. We've created this weird belief system that breakfast has to be different from lunch or lunch has to be different from dinner. It doesn't have to be. Our ancient primitive or superior societies, more advanced societies than we are now, do you think they looked at breakfast and lunch and dinner? Or do you think they just ate food? They just ate food. So, we'll get into the food side of things in a little bit, but when you adopt this way of life, a lot of people always mention that they feel like crap. They don't feel good. Could be for a day, it could be for three months, while they're going through that system of rechanging their body. A lot of people say, oh, I've been doing this way of life for four weeks and I haven't lost any weight. I go, well, how many decades did it take for you to put it on? <laughs> this isn't a magic pill. A lot of people that are underweight, when they start to eat this way, they actually put on the weight because their bodies are starting to work as they're meant to do. They're absorbing the nutrients. So I never see this as weight loss. I see it as a lifelong journey back to health. Now, if someone has had chronic health for decades, it's not going to fix like that. And I think that's what we need to be aware of. And we've got a lot of doctors in the audience. And, you know, I think you need to spell out that this is a long-term thing. If it hasn't worked for you, if you haven't dropped 10 kilos or 10, 20 pounds in five weeks, don't be hard on yourself. It might take a year till your body starts to get working again before it starts shedding or putting on weight. So just be aware that, because when people go through that detox phase, it's the headaches, it's the lethargy, it's the brain fog, they can often give up. So try to inspire them that it's a long-term thing. Now the secret to all this is that if you, the secret to all of this is that you need to cook. And that's where I come in. And that's where you can come in. We all have to do it. Yes, it's a chore. Yes, it's something no one really looks forward to doing. You do? Yeah. I do. I do. Because you know how good it is. And for a lot of people, it's meditative. It gets them in the zone. It's their zen moment. 
a lot of people love to put on bad 80s music like myself. <laughs> There's no bad 80s music. <laughs> There's no bad 80s music. <laughs> but this is what it's about. Got to find a way to enjoy this life skill. You have to. Do it with your children, do it with your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, do it with your partner. Chain them to the kitchen <laughs> or get them out of the kitchen. <laughs> Whatever it takes for you to enjoy this process. And it could be a, a simple act of you challenge yourself every week to try something new. I mean, the internet, I mean, I don't even need to, I can be out of a job today because there's millions and millions of recipes that are low carb or paleo high fat, healthy fat, whatever you want. They're all there available on the internet for free. None look as good as my cookbooks, but they're there. <laughs> but you have to inspire people to cook. You have to make it a priority for them. Unless you're super rich and you have someone that can cook for you and shop for you and make sure that they're buying the good organic stuff and the grass fed and the wild caught and the chemical free, you have to do it. There's no shortcut to this. And if we look back into our ancient societies, I mean, how revered was the person that cooked for the, for the tribe or the, the family? And they were an important part of the village life or society life. And you have that opportunity in your own home. Even if you're single, you know, it makes it even easier. <laughs> You cook one meal, and, and to do this properly, how I say is cook in bulk, dedicate maybe a few hours on the weekend and maybe a, an hour here during the week and cook in bulk. Invest in a chest freezer, a big freezer, buy in bulk, cook in bulk, freeze. And then it's very simple. If you've got some fresh vegetables in the fridge, you can then take out a portion of the meat that you've either cooked, slow cooked, in, in bulk, in batches, and you've always got food. You have to be organised for this to work. Let's get stuck into it. Here are some examples of meals you can give to your patients or to yourself. I don't know whether there's doctors in here. Bone broth. One of the easiest things in the world. It takes five minutes to make. And you can make enough for a week. Five minutes. Any type of bone. Fish, crustacean, poultry, game, cattle, lamb, pork. As long as it's a good quality sourced meat. Had a natural diet. Put the bones in there. The fatty parts. The bits that are really, really cheap and inexpensive. Water. Clean water. I wouldn't want to be heating up fluoride, fluoride, fluoridated? Fluoridated. fluoridated. I wouldn't be wanting to heat that up every day and drinking it down. Clean water. Paramount. Paramount. Splash of apple cider vinegar helps to release the nutrients. So in the bones, and we've got the collagen, we've got the gelatin. And as we know, fantastic for, uh, uh, for autoimmune issues, for joint pain. I mean, so many athletes these days, this is part of their training regime. They're eating it. In Australia, rugby players, AFL players, cricket players, Dr. Bruckner, they're having this as part of their training regime. Bone broth every day, the New Zealand Warriors. Fantastic football teams. They're having this. It's happening. They're into it. And you just simmer it and it makes beautiful things. And then from the bone broth, you have a cup of it a day if you like. A little bit of salt. Make sure you put some good quality salt in, otherwise it's quite bland. Um, and then you can spice it with turmeric, fresh herbs, black pepper, whatever you like. It's really, really simple. It's delicious. My kids had a cup of it this morning before they went out on the slopes. Every day we have it. Now, change it up. If you, can't like, if you don't like the flavour of broth by itself, I say, I say start with chicken. It's the most delicious. It's the gentlest, I'd say. Um, but if you can't fathom having that, replacing your morning coffee with a brothy, then turn it into a soup, turn it into a braise or a curry, what, however you can get it into your diet. Fermented vegetables, these two things, Friends of mine in the health industry in Australia, medical professionals, they said if we could just get the population of bone broth and fermented vegetables, our health issues would dramatically decrease, even if they continued to eat the same foods that they're eating now. Fermented vegetables, sauerkraut, if you're from Europe, kimchi, if you are Korean. This is the way that food was stored and preserved and kept when the harvest 
when harvest was bountiful, before refrigeration. And all it is is cabbage and salt, or other types of vegetables and salt. That's it. But it creates this beautiful lacto, uh, lactic acid bacteria. It's fantastic for our guts. Bone broth will cost you about 10 to 20 cents per cup. Fermented vegetables, your daily requirement will probably cost you 10 to 20 cents. I mean, this is cheap stuff. So when people say eating healthy is expensive, tell them bullshit. <laughs> Bone broth, fermented vegetables, that should be the starting place for the rest or the foundation for what comes next. If you're not doing this yourself, I'd, I'd suggest uh, Wild Fermentation by Sander Katz. He's a USA uh, native and a uh, beautiful book to learn all about fermented vegetables. Uh, Sally Fallon, Nourishing Traditions, wonderful information about bone broth. Chicken and vegetable soup, this is really simple. You make your broth and then all you've got to do is add your protein of choice and your vegetables of choice. Once you've got your broth, this can be on the table in 10 minutes. And everybody loves this. Pick the vegetables that are in season, bountiful, cheap, delicious. Pick your protein. If it's not chicken you don't like that, do seafood, do lamb, do beef, do duck. Raw slaw, as I said before, small amounts of meat, lots of vegetables. And that is why this type of food, this is what I call paleo, or this is what I call low carb. It's got good quality fats in there. You can add some bone marrow in there too, which is one of my favorites. But abundance of vegetables, generally above ground, small amounts of meat, moderate amounts of meat. So you don't exceed what you need, but you're not also skimping. And you've got the bone broths in there as well. It's a perfect dish. A little serve of uh, fermented vegetables on the side, job done. Raw vegetables, again, fantastic for our guts. Make a mayonnaise, good quality eggs, extra virgin olive oil, good fats. Fold it through some simple vegetables. Paleo breakfast, if we are going to call it that, it's simple. Have some bacon and eggs, but add some frickin' vegetables. So much so in this, in this movement, I hear everyone say, we eat bacon and eggs every day. We eat bacon and eggs a few times a week as well, but we make sure there's vegetables on there. There's avocado, or there's greens, or there's salad, or there's mushrooms, or there's something else in there, okay? It's important. I, uh, we had a discussion with Dr. Chatterjee last night, and he said, what are we understanding from this is everyone sort of saying the same thing? If we can increase our vegetables, we're on to a good thing. Creamy chicken salad. Again, five minutes. Once a week, cook up a roast chicken or two, depending how many people are in your family. That's what we did last night. We ate half the roast chicken between four of us. And it wasn't a big chicken. Last night, when everyone went to bed, I took all the meat off the other half of the chicken. That's in a container in the fridge, which is going to turn into a curry or a soup or a salad over the next couple of days. And the bones went in to top up my bone broth. So creamy chicken salad like this. It's cabbage, it's chicken, it's avocado, it's some pine nuts, it's fresh herbs, extra virgin olive oil, lemon juice. It's delicious and it takes you five minutes. Good quality fats, small amount of protein, good quality vegetables. If you want to make it a super salad, add some kraut into it. Simple. Cauliflower fried rice. I'm sure you've tried it before. This also takes 10 minutes to get onto the table, and it's cheap as chips. You basically chop up a cauliflower so it resembles rice, or put it in a food processor, and then stir fry it with garlic, ginger, <coughs> coriander. Add your protein of choice. It could be some bacon, it could be some shrimp, it could be some chicken, it could be whatever it is, some salmon. Flavour it with whatever you like, some sugar-free fish sauce, some lime juice, crack an egg into it, add some fresh herbs. Again, 10 minutes. Cheap food. Really cheap. If you look at everything that we've put up here, it's budget-friendly, it's delicious, it's satiating, so you don't feel hungry afterwards. Great for school lunches. Wild salmon. In Australia, we cannot get wild salmon. You think we're a lucky country, but we have to come over here to eat wild salmon. This is beautiful zucchini noodles. Or courgette, as it's, uh, do you call it zucchini or courgette or squash? Zoodles. Zucchini. Zoodles. Wonderful. <laughs> if you're a doctor, you want to get your patient something, get him a zoodle maker. <laughs> Cost you $5 or $10. Put a zucchini through it, fantastic. 
cook a piece of protein next to it. I've covered this with a dairy-free pesto. Again, five minutes. Last night I made a chimichurri sauce to go with our roast chicken. Two minutes in the blender. Bunch of parsley, bunch of cilantro, garlic, ginger, olive oil, apple cider vinegar. I had no chilli, I was frustrated. Um, <laughs> but it still tasted good. Fantastic. Roasts. And people say, well, how do, what, what really is this paleo or low carb thing? I go, just cook a roast. But instead of potatoes, do some vegetables. So last night, we now roast chicken in the same pan. Fennel, broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, pumpkin or squash, uh, some sweet potato, heaps of onion. My kids and I love garlic. We had a bulb of garlic each. Not a, not a, uh, a bulb. You know, so there's like 12 or 15 cloves of garlic in there. Dr. Chatterjee was very happy. So we all sat there and we, for about 10 minutes we were eating a whole bulb of roasted garlic. And as he said, he goes, the four things I, I encourage people to eat for good gut bacteria, onions, leeks, garlic, and something else. Onion, garlic, leeks, something else. Um, you can ask him. But we had that in that dish. It was absolutely beautiful. And the house smelled delicious. The broth was going, the roast chicken was going, the vegetables. And do you know how long it took me to make that dinner, that, that roast chicken dinner with all these vegetables? 10 minutes. 10 minutes of preparation in the oven for an hour, out. It's 10 minutes of work for the most beautiful, sure you've got to cook it, but it all goes into one pot. So roast dinners, absolutely delicious. Pork, seafood, fish. And you don't have to eat the whole leg of lamb. You cook it, shave off enough for everybody, and then put it in the fridge. And then eat it for breakfast the next day. Because breakfast doesn't have to be toast or cereal or eggs. My breakfast is leftover roast vegetables and roast chicken. Think about breakfast as your leftovers. If you can do that, and the great thing about eating this way is after four to six weeks of doing this 100%, you only want to eat one or two meals a day because you're satiated. It's really, really simple, and people can't believe it. During our program, I always get the email, something's wrong, I'm not hungry. I only feel like eating two <laughs> meals a day. I go, no, that's right. I said, that's how we're designed. We should be able to go for a day or two, maybe even longer without food. You know? But I don't like to push that. I just think, let's teach them how to eat beautiful, delicious, budget-friendly food and feel great. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much.